So here we are, yo, what is up guys and welcome, it's Franklin, back with my review for episode 2 of The Walking Dead, the final season, giving my thoughts and opinion, just rambling on about all the aspects that I liked about the episodes, and so on. Before we go ahead and start, of course, IGN, man, they just don't like this game so far, you know? Obviously, this review was, you know, made before the layoffs and stuff happened, but they gave it a 5. They said it was even worse than the first episode, and I saw one more from like GameSpot or something that gave it a 6, okay? In my opinion, let's go ahead and, you know, throw it out there. This was one of the best episodes Telltale has ever produced, you know? Obviously, one of their last episodes they had made as a team, but it was definitely a, you know, it was, it was great, okay? I absolutely loved it. Of course, you know, my channel's Telltale related, so... It's kind of a bit of a fanboyism, but I thought it was just one of the greatest episodes they have ever made for The Walking Dead. It was just so packed full of story that was interesting and characters that were developed quite a lot. New mechanics, you know, the choices were pretty cool as well, and various things like that. So, let's go ahead and structure this review real quick. Let's go ahead and go into the story. So, for what I gather of the story... It was more of a break into the initial conflict. Of course, it was a bit slow. This episode was definitely slower than episode 1 was. And episode 1 was pretty slow. Which I don't think is a bad thing. Once again, I enjoy slow episodes, you know. Obviously, it was slow at the beginning and picked up at the end. But I enjoyed it. It being slow managed to just, you know, go ahead and just keep me interested in what's going to happen in the future and what is happening right now while developing characters and you know the story was and it managed to grab me with the whole slow paceness which I, I do think that you know slow paced stories are better than fast paced stories it really depends on the property but for The Walking Dead I think slow paced development is better because characters are developed through time spent around them and if you go ahead and spend more time slowing down getting to know them it definitely helps out in that aspect for me at least so so pretty much uh characters gonna go ahead and tie it into the story now it's gonna be a little bit of an add-on that's gonna be for the whole nightmare section of clementine's nightmare it was a little bit underwhelming not gonna lie okay i expected a little bit more it was essentially just clementine walking down the hall and you know some noises and the horse and various things like that you know could have just been like a, a bit of a, a alluding to what's going to happen with Lily going ahead and bringing in the horses and then the fire being maybe the boarding school catching on fire due to Lily's Molotovs and stuff like that. So uh, the crying and stuff from babies, I was expecting that to be more of like AJ at the McCarroll Ranch, various things like that. But that was the only like underwhelming part of the episode that got me like so hyped but it didn't happen so that was a tiny bit disappointing to be honest but hopefully they will expand upon it if episodes 3 and 4 gets made man character development this one was better than episode 1 episode 1 was pretty damn good okay we got to develop Mitch and Ruby and personally, I thought they were going to be background characters that don't get much development, but they actually managed to go ahead and develop both Mitch and Ruby to a great extent. You know, Mitch, he was kind of a bitch, not going to lie. For the most part, he was definitely annoying. And the fact that he actually made me feel that way just shows that, you know, okay, he was a good character. I admit, Mitch was a pretty good uh, pulling force for Clementine. Of course, you know, he can go either one of two ways. Whether you go ahead and burn the teacher's body or you go ahead and bury her, he will treat you different. But, you know, he ends up warming up to Clementine towards the end if you go ahead and burn the body. Because he's like, okay, I, I see what Clementine's thinking now. She's more relatable to me as a person. And that's actually pretty cool, okay? So Mitch was definitely a pretty nice character. Kind of annoying at the at the beginning but that definitely makes for a, a very interesting story because if everyone's around you is pretty much on your side that wouldn't really be too interesting because they all agree with you and Mitch was that one that did not really agree with what was going on you know and that made for a very interesting story uh from Mitch's side so R.I.P. Mitch you were annoying but hey got it handed to you you were a pretty well developed character 
throughout the greenhouse scene and various other different scenes so looking at ruby got to see a side of her that i did not expect she was definitely more you know soft and compassionate than i actually thought i actually like her she actually pretty cool not gonna lie so ruby was definitely well developed kind of made her feel like you know emotions like sadness and just anger sometimes and it was definitely really cool how they actually you know made mitch and ruby just you know kind of moved them up to secondary characters and that was definitely really awesome so while that was happening i guess you know they didn't really have time to go ahead and develop willie and a sim for the most part a sim was pretty much not really existent in this episode too much he, he was there of course but we didn't get to interact with him how we did at least a little bit in episode one so i would have guessed that episode three will be more of you know dealing with a sim not really because of what happened at the end but i'll get to that later okay uh so character development looking at lewis it was a bit more focused on violet because she actually took the leader role so you were talking to her a lot more and then occasionally you talk to lewis about various different things and i'm glad they actually went ahead and made lewis how you know it was okay he was definitely broken up about what happened to marlon because that was his best friend but he was also conflicted with you know he's my best friend but he did a horrible thing so that definitely was a great little aspect of lewis's character development i played the episode twice so i've seen you know both halves of going with violet and going with lewis so that was definitely really interesting the romance scene between lewis and clementine also was hilarious but also made sense and that's what I gotta say, you know, looking at Violet as well, it made sense. Lewis, on the other hand, you know, he's going through a lot of grief right now. And maybe a little bit of love can actually, you know, help him push through that. But looking at Violet, she's over here leading and she's very appreciative of Clementine. She's happy that Clementine has been here. And it kind of leads that way as well if you go ahead and romance Violet. Now, personally, I like the, the romance Violet, but... I don't bash the the Lewis people. They're definitely both great characters. They're definitely really great, and it developed a lot this episode because Viola did as well, which was definitely really good. Okay, like character development has been perfect. I love it. It's been so good, and I have to applaud the former team because they did a phenomenal job with these two characters. And I wish I can go ahead and see the original vision with the original team on what they have for episode three and four regarding Lewis and Violet and all of them because it has been great. So character development, this episode was definitely a 10 out of 10. It was lacking a sim, but we already got a little bit about him. So definitely everyone who wasn't developed in episode one was developed in episode two. And that was definitely great. And they built upon Lewis and Violet in a great way as well. So characters, I love them, they're great. Oh yeah, also for characters, I forgot to mention my dude James. So James is of course the Whisperer character, who is definitely really cool and hey, he fit in pretty well. Kind of just go ahead and saves Clementine and AJ and goes about his business. Hopefully he will come back in episodes 3 and 4 if they are made. And definitely I want to see more of him because he, he's very ominous and mysterious and I want to see what his role is going to be in the future episodes because he's very helpful and he wants to help and he also doesn't like Lily's group so hey maybe he'll come back and start some kind of counter war with them using his army of walkers to go ahead and lead them into danger okay so that's definitely really cool as well I like that a lot well definitely a nice idea to incorporate a whisperer without making you know such a, a pivotal character like alpha or you know beta and various things like that so that definitely was pretty awesome definitely cool seeing a whisperer kind of just goes ahead and throws in a comic tie-in without making it too plot armor-ish okay so that's definitely what i think about that looking at new mechanics we did have some new mechanics we had the the aiming and shooting at walker uh fight it wasn't the best it was a little bit wonky no aim assist because i do play on controller so you know if I use keyboard and mouse, it would have been a lot better, but it was a bit, you know, tough trying to, <laughs> trying to get that for me at least. I did actually hit all the walkers and got the achievement for like not missing, but it was definitely an interesting concept. You can go ahead and lead them into fire or lead them out of fire, which was definitely really cool as well. So I'm glad they actually went ahead and just, you know, sprinkled in some new mechanics 
kind of have each episode or episode one and episode two feel a bit different with the whole new mechanics and stuff like that it was definitely really cool we had another new mechanic that was pretty much connecting constellations in the sky it wasn't too intuitive but it was definitely there and made for a little interesting mini game for the most part it wasn't a puzzle but a mini game it was definitely really cool just nice scene there that's why I loved Violet's one a lot. It was like you were spending time with her doing something that's not really too important. Just, you know, spending more time. It was definitely really awesome. So new mechanics were a plus for me. Looking at the choices, we did not get the CD5 major choices. I mean, you can go ahead and like think about, oh, what you did that are very important. But as far as choices go, I'm going to go ahead and like review this as the effects of episode one choices and the effect of episode two choices. Now, episode one choices they did have an effect on episode 2 in a minimal way okay the minute choices like you know going ahead and letting AJ swear and not letting him swear definitely did play a part in this episode and it was definitely really cool both outcomes are really cool so looking at Abel of course Abel can have either one arm or both arms and it seems like no matter what you did there it was the same okay uh, for the most part he was still getting his ass kicked by Clementine most of the time, and he still had the same amount of struggle that he did whenever he was having one arm or just both arms. And I'm very perplexed about why he never mentioned, why he was never like infuriated about, you know, Clementine pushing him out the window and, you know, losing his arm. I would definitely like the little small mention, like, you know, whenever Clementine was like in the boarding school building with Abel, he mentions like, oh, Clementine, because of you, I lost my arm. It felt the same either way, him having both arms or only one arm. Small nitpick there, but it definitely did play a, a different part. So maybe in episode three, he would have mentioned it because, you know, he is our prisoner. So having him mention that would definitely be, would definitely make more sense because he's tied up. We're talking to him definitely in episode three if it were to happen for the most part but that's definitely really cool okay so as far as hubs and exploration go it was a little bit weaker than episode one definitely not a bad thing okay hubs were still there okay the greenhouse scene was definitely really good walking around and talking to the people in the preparation for the attack on the boarding school was definitely really cool and various things like that it was definitely really really cool so hubs and exploration they weren't bad but you know of course it did have less collectibles which you know kind of reflects that there were less things to walk around at and do things so as far as that goes it was a little bit weaker but it doesn't really take away from you know what i thought about it it was definitely enough for me as far as length goes quick sectional length Link was a okay okay i love the two hour episodes it has definitely been a treat and telltale actually delivered with that that was definitely really surprising like, like this whole season has just been telltale just picking up their shit and doing it just owning their greatness because this has been a perfect season so far like i've just been so interested in the plot and various things like that oh yeah but how have i forgot to mention lily so the return of Lily was definitely really, really, really great, okay? It was a bit, you know, controversial on whether she is this mean, you know, in people's headcanon, but she's definitely a changed individual. She's so mean, and I spoke about this so many times before, but she was definitely a complex character. She wasn't evil in season one. Yeah, she argued a lot, but she wasn't completely evil, and in this season, you know, the final season, she's evil. She's over here kidnapping children to fight a war for her group, okay? That is as evil as I can think. And I'm not entirely sure, you know, how I feel about it because I think Lily wasn't that evil in season one. Yeah, times can change and things can happen, but that was that in my mind for the most part. So, you know, uh, obviously at the end, she did kind of show... She did kind of hesitate when trying to kill Clementine. That's the only saving grace I had for Lily, okay? That showed that, man, even though she is completely evil in this season, she's showing remorse for Clementine because they were once family, and that's true, okay? 
you know in season one lily was very very nice to clementine nice to the kids and cared about the group but she went so far too far whenever she shot carly and that was the only really evil thing she ever did so to me it didn't make sense to go ahead and make lily completely evil like disregarding you know the safety of children and sending them out to war and various things like that it was a bit weird to me but that final bit of her actually hesitating to go ahead and kill clementine definitely made me think about the old lily and that was definitely really cool so overall this episode was damn near perfect i probably get it a I probably give it a 9.5 maybe uh, because you know some small little nitpicks with the whole Abel arm thing and then the small nitpicks of Lily and the small nitpicks of the hubs and exploration other than that this episode has been damn near perfect a 9.5 for me not sure how you can give it a 5 IGN because everyone in the community literally asked for slower paced episodes more character development and various things like that so that is my review for episode two man it was definitely a blast talking about the episode it, it was definitely fun playing the episode and whoever takes up episode three and four if it comes to fruition i hope they can go ahead and recreate the original devs ideas you know what they were planning on doing with the season i hope they can go ahead and capture it because it will be a real treat to have clementine's story wrapped up with a damn near perfect score from the community in our eyes okay episodes one and two has been a treat for the fans you know two of the best episodes that telltale has ever created in terms of length and quality i'm gonna miss them man i miss the original team of telltale because they did a phenomenal job with these two episodes so that's enough for me go ahead and share your thoughts and opinions and nitpicks and stuff about episode two suffer the children and let's hope for the best for the continuation of the final seasons, episode 3 and 4. Whoever ends up taking up the production of episodes 3 and 4, good luck. And I hope it goes well. And also, once again, thank you to the Telltale staff that were laid off. They did a phenomenal job and it's very unfortunate and sad that they were let go. And they came through, you know, financial dips and stuff and... They were not paid severance various things like that it's very sad at least maybe my kind words about the episode will cheer some of them up i'm not sure but it was definitely a phenomenal episode like so good like i don't know but anyways enough rambling thank you guys for watching once again i'm in front of a and i will catch you guys next time on the walking dead